Welcome to my talk on building your first internal developer platform with Cloud Development Kit for Terraform and TypeScript. For those of you unfamiliar with internal developer platforms, here's my definition. An internal developer platform, or IDP, is a self-service, on-demand platform for software developers to provision ephemeral, production-like environments. But if this definition doesn't mean much to you right now, don't worry, because this talk will make everything crystal clear. I have structured this talk into four sections. In the first section, I will explain the fundamental problem that an IDP attempts to solve. In the second section, I will look at how a staging environment is a possible solution to the problem, and how an IDP can complement staging to provide a more flexible solution. Then, in the third section, I will show you at a high level how to build an IDP from scratch using Cloud Development Kit for Terraform or CDKTF with TypeScript, Node.js and React. At the end of the talk, I will also explore some common features found in IDPs that we don't have time to cover today. But before we dive in, a little introduction about myself. I am currently a staff software engineer at Zinc, a London-based background checking company. I see myself as a generalist. I have worked professionally on the front end, back end and DevOps, and I love writing. And I've written a book on the JavaScript ecosystem called Building Enterprise JavaScript Applications. I've also written a live project series with Manning called Internal Developer Platform on AWS which I will speak more about at the end of the talk. So without further ado, let's dive in. And let's start with the question, what problem are we trying to solve? Fundamentally, the problem is that developers want to have confidence that their code works in production. This is usually achieved by running a set of tests. We have the automated unit integration and end-to-end -end tests that test for known issues and we also have the manual exploratory tests that test for unknown issues. But to carry out these tests, the operations team need to provide developers with test environments. And providing these test environments is the problem that an IDP tries to solve. But an IDP is not the only solution. So let's explore some more established solution, namely having a staging environment as the test environment. Staging is a permanent test environment that mimics production as closely as practical. Staging is meant to provide a realistic environment to test before deploying to production. The promise of staging is that it will reduce the number of production issues. And when implemented properly, staging does live up to its promise. But many teams do not follow best practices. And what we end up with are situations like these where engineering teams get rid of staging altogether. The most common pitfall with staging is that it is not a faithful reproduction of production. Staging should have the same number of databases, servers, network configuration, installed libraries, everything except mocked services need to be the same. Otherwise, we end up with the, it worked on my machine problem, but now it's called the, it works on staging problem. However, even if you do reproduce staging well, having staging as your only test environment still falls short in other ways. One shortcoming is the inevitability of configuration drift. In theory, every change that is applied to production was first applied in staging. But in practice, over time, you'll find that changes are applied to staging, but not production. For example, when a staging deployment fails, artifacts from the failed deployments may not always be cleaned up. Over time, this leads to staging no longer being a faithful mirror of production. Configuration as code tools like Ansible and Puppet does help, but it's another set of tools to configure and manage. The second shortcoming of staging is cost. Staging should have the same scale as production. 
This means staging often costs as much as production to run. If staging is underutilized, money is being wasted on an idle environment. On the other side of the coin, when staging is oversubscribed, it becomes a bottleneck for developers, and the operations team would have to manually coordinate between developers to see who can use staging. A common solution to this is to have multiple staging environments. But apart from the increased cost, it's not a scalable solution. If the engineering team grows bigger, all you end up having is multiple queues instead of one. An internal developer platform is another way to provide test environments that complement staging. Let's look at our definition of an IDP again and see how it can patch over the shortcomings of staging. Let's first focus on the word on demand. This means that test environments are created as and when it is needed. This helps avoid the configuration drift problem because if developers need to change something in the environment, they can easily create a new environment instead of modifying the existing one. The ephemeral part of the definition means that these test environments are destroyed when it's no longer needed. This mitigates the cost issue as test environments are destroyed when unused, no money is wasted on idle environments. Lastly, let's shift our focus to the phrase self-service. This means instead of the operations team coordinating who can control staging, an IDP allows developers to create environments all by themselves. This is usually done through a web-based or command line interface. But this definition is still a bit abstract, so let's actually show you what a simple IDP looks like. Let's suppose we have a very simple API called pet app. All it does is randomly return a name from a long list of possible pet names. A developer has made a change that updates the list of names to all be French names, and he now wants to deploy an environment to test out his changes. This is how he can do this using an IDP. First, he must give the environment a unique name, specify the application he wants to test, which is pet app, and configure it with certain parameters, such as the Git branch to deploy. After filling in the form, he clicks create. After a few minutes, the environment is deployed and the DNS name of the API is printed on the UI. Once deployed, we can curl the endpoint and confirm that the changes have taken effect. And when we're done with testing this feature, we can destroy the environment by pressing a single button. Hopefully with this demonstration, I have convinced you that having an IDP makes managing test environments super easy for everyone. But now you may wonder, how do I actually build an IDP? For an IDP to fulfill the self-service requirement, it must be able to provision and destroy infrastructure automatically and programmatically. To do this, we can adopt an infrastructure as code approach. This allows us to define the infrastructure of our environment as code and provision and destroy it using IAC tools like Pulumi, Terraform, or as we will use in this talk, Cloud Development Kit for Terraform or CDKTF. CDKTF is a relatively new kind of IAC tool that builds on top of Terraform and allows you to define infrastructure in a familiar programming language like TypeScript, Python, Java, c -sharp, or Go. For example, our pet app environment may look something like this. At the heart of the diagram is the ECS service that runs the API behind a load balancer. But the environment also includes an ECR repository to store the Docker image and a code build project to redeploy the API whenever new changes are pushed to the Git branch. We can define this set of infrastructure as a CDKTF application written in TypeScript. For example, 
we can define the ECR repository using code like this. And an ECS service using code like this. After defining all the resources that makes up our environment and adding a bit of boilerplate code, we can then run the cdktf deploy command and all the infrastructure resources for our environment would be provisioned. So by using cdktf, we have transformed the deployment process from a manual process using the AWS console to a semi-automated one that involves writing some TypeScript code and running a single command. But we're not quite there yet because someone is still writing code and running the cdktf command. We must remember that not every developer is comfortable with TypeScript, cloud concepts, infrastructure as code, or even running commands on a terminal. So how can we create a solution that works for everyone? Well, we can create an API that, when called, will programmatically update our CDKTF project and programmatically execute the CDKTF commands. For example, this is what a skeleton of an API endpoint would look like for creating a new environment. When a user sends an HTTP POST request to this environment's endpoint, the handler will generate some TypeScript code that defines a new set of infrastructure resources. It will add this code to our existing CDKTF project. It will persist these changes to the Git remote repository. And finally, it will run the CDKTF deploy command to provision these new resources. So altogether, this endpoint provides an additional layer of abstraction that allows developers to create environments by calling API endpoints instead of manually writing code and running CDKTF commands. But we can go one step further and create a web-based user interface that calls the API on our behalf. For example, this is a React component that displays a form that when submitted, sends a HTTP POST request to the environment's endpoint. Having this UI further abstracts the user away from the underlying infrastructure. Now, they don't even have to make API calls. They just need to fill in a form and click a few buttons. This web-based platform allows anyone to spin up an environment from any branch without having to learn anything about TypeScript infrastructure, Terraform, or CDKTF. Just as platform as a service platforms like Heroku made deploying applications easier, just push your changes and Heroku will take care of the servers, networking, and deployments. An IDP is similar to an internal platform as a service. So in summary, the blueprint to creating an IDP from scratch is to first define the infrastructure for each environment as code, and then wrap the IAC tool with an API, and then wrap the API with either a web-based interface or a command line interface. This will give you a rudimentary IDP. Now that we have more context, let's revisit our previous demo, but this time I'll show you the API logs and you can see what's happening behind the scenes. First, we can see that the API endpoint handler has successfully generated the snippet, added it to the CDKTF project, and committed the changes to Git. It is now trying to synthesize the Terraform code using the supplied user input. We can then see Terraform has come up with a plan to create 16 resources, and that this plan has automatically been approved. The next three minutes or so involves the AWS provider, we can call to the AWS API to create those resources. And when it's done, the status of the environment is reflected in the IDP. Destroying the environment is a similar process. I hope I was able to demonstrate that the IDP is a good companion to the staging environment. 
that it gives freedom to the developers to deploy and test whatever they want, to experiment and to learn. But note that an IDP doesn't replace staging. If your production environment is a permanent long running environment, then a permanent long running staging environment should also exist. Some issues such as memory leaks may take a long time to surface and may not be caught in ephemeral environments. So half a staging environment and half an IDP, they are complementary to each other. What I showed you today is a very basic IDP. To make it more useful, you may consider implementing any of the following features. Automated teardown or time to live, where every environment has a default lifespan of a day or a week, which can be manually extended. This feature prevents permanent or abandoned or idle environments, which helps reduce cost. Notifications. The IDP can send a message to the developer when deployment is complete. It can also send a message to notify the platform team when deployment fails. An IDP can trigger tests. When an environment is deployed, have automated tests run to ensure that the environment is deployed correctly. Authentication and authorization. Implementing an auth layer can prevent developers from modifying someone else's environment. It can also help attribute cost to each developer or team. An IDP consists of many components. And in the short time that I have for this talk, there wasn't really enough time for me to dive deep into the code. But I hope you still have gotten something valuable from this talk. If you like the idea of an IDP and you want to follow a step-by-step hands-on guide on how to build one from scratch, I have produced a live project series with Manning that goes through everything we've gone through today, but in much more detail. The series also covers cost management, authentication and authorization, AWS organizations, and a lot more. You get access to the source code, and if you buy the whole series, you'll be eligible to take an exam to get a certificate of completion, which you can show on your CV, or on social media. I've spent many months writing and rewriting this series and it's something that I'm proud of and I hope you have a chance to take it. But other than that, thank you for listening to my talk and I'll see you in the Slack channels.